The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does it your concern after me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill up the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it had came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana at Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. Gospel of the Lord. We read from John, although this year we'll be reading uh, from Luke, Uh, but we get in all three Sunday, A, B, and C of the second year, year, uh, we hear from John's gospel. And so we say we hear uh, from this, the wedding feast of Cana. And uh, particularly when we're dealing with John, we have to realize it's like lasagna. You can see the surface story, but you can't stop there. You need to keep going layer by layer and say, What's John really up to? What's he really teaching? What's his message? And so in a way, today is really not about a wedding feast in Cana at all. It's something much deeper than that. Uh, first of all, we might say, just by some background, we feel possibly that uh, this was a relative of Jesus, or maybe specifically a relative of his mother, who, as you may notice, and probably didn't, in the Gospel of John, she never has a name. She's always the mother of Jesus, and that will tie into the story. Because remember the shame and honor thing we've talked about so many times. Uh, For anyone, even though they had this distress of having no wine, for Mary to intrude herself into the problem, even though she meant to be helpful, would have been considered shameful for her and shameful to the family. She had no business sticking her nose in something that didn't pertain to her, even though she meant to be good. So probably if she was a member of the family, she could do it. So probably this was a family celebration. This was a family wedding. 
Mary wanted to be sympathetic, and so she was. Now, wine, if you read the Old Testament, was always the sign of the new wine of heaven. It was the wine that God gave. And wine, of course, in moderation, brings joy to people's hearts. It was something that gladdened people and was a sign of God's love, his fruitfulness, his goodness, and his very life itself. Twenty years later, if people ever talked about this wedding that had run out of wine, that would have been the first thing people would have talked about. They would have said, how shameful, how embarrassing that they ran out of wine. Can you believe? Oh, my heavens. It's just people talk, you know, even back then. So the mother of Jesus is primarily a woman of faith. She was sensitive. She realized the embarrassment, and so she wanted to help. The mother of Jesus um, tells us that we should do what we can do when we see a problem, because it's not part of our culture. Well, in some ways, people would not want us to stick their nose into their business. But when she sees the problem and she recognizes the shame we would bring to the family, she takes action. She goes to Jesus, her number one man, the one that she knows can solve all problems. And she says, they have no more wine. Jesus can be a little strange in his own little way. He kind of pretends like, well, what do you expect me to do about it? Am I the local state store manager or something like that? When people run out of wine, you come and tell me, what am I going to do about it? So Mary sort of goes to the chief stores and says, um, he could be like this sometimes, but don't worry, he'll help. He doesn't always seem to answer prayers right away, but eventually uh, he'll do it. So these are the only words Mary ever speaks in the gospel. Do whatever he tells you. So somehow those words need to be important. We need to listen to what those words say to us and to think about it, whether we do indeed do whatever Jesus tells us to do. Who knows Jesus better than Mary? Who knows who he is and what he is and how he functions better than Mary? And so she goes to him as if in a prayer. She just simply says, here's the problem. What can you do about it? Now, Jesus says, my hour has not yet come. What's the hour? Oh, yeah. The hour was not an hour on the clock. The hour, meant, of course, is his passion, death, and resurrection. That's the hour. And so the sooner he starts to work miracles and raise the dead, the sooner it brings him to that hour. This is only the second chapter, the beginning of the second chapter. He's got a lot to do. So he can't begin, in a sense, too soon, or it will all be brought to naught. He won't have time to preach his message, uh, to make disciples, to make followers. And so there are the water jars. What are they all about? What are they filled with? Water for ceremonial washings. Jesus changes the water into wine. And what is wine? It's Jesus himself, the wine of the new covenant, the covenant, the contract that God makes with us. Now, so we can be filled with wine and not simply the tasteless water something that is tasty, something that brings joy to our hearts. So he says, take some of the water turned to wine and take it to the head waiter and let him taste it. He said, where did you get this? Oh, the guy over there, he said, fill the jugs with water and then bring some of it and let you taste it. He said, so he calls the groom. He says to the groom, and people usually, when they have a wedding reception, serve the good wine, and then when people get a little bit too much, then you bring on the cheap stuff, the Apple Hill and the Thunderbird. They won't know the difference. But what you have done is taken the cases of French Bordeaux, you've kept them hidden, and now at the end of the reception, you begin to bring out the junky stuff. Thus it says, Jesus revealed his glory, because Jesus himself is the new wine. He is the rich wine of heaven, the rich wine of the kingdom of God. It's like a marriage covenant. And so Cana talks about not so much the marriage of one man and one woman, but the marriage covenant between God and his people, which is consented to ultimately in the sacrifice of the cross. Marriage is always a sign of God's love between the bride and the groom. So in the gospel today, the man getting married is not the groom. The woman getting married is not the bride. Jesus is the groom. You're all, we're all the bride. 
Guys, let's fix your veils, will you, a little bit here? They're getting a little bit wrinkled here. We're all the bride. We're called into covenant love, covenant relationship with Jesus. That's who we are. That's what we're called to do, what we're called to be. It's really so much more than just coming to church and keeping our nose clean and saying to ourselves, you're okay. You're holy enough. Don't, don't get too excited about the whole thing. Just do the best that you can do. So we want to come into this wedding reception today. And so how do we get into this eternal relationship that Jesus calls us to? This wedding feast, this real feast. What does he really say that Mary alludes to? He says, come to me, all you, and have a relationship with me of love. Stop being a stranger. Stop thinking it should be your way. And sometimes the twisted way you've learned through the years, and sometimes it's the church's fault. We've just taught, be good, avoid mortal sin, come to church. You got it, got it made. I long for your love. I want to celebrate with you as if this is a wedding celebration, because it is. Every Sunday we come together to celebrate the covenant love of God with us. The happy hour of Cana then, of course, ultimately ends on Calvary. When the mother of Jesus comes together again to be the woman, to be the one who decides to enter into covenant love once again. And so as we said, this is part of the series of our Alpha Commitment of our Alpha ministry, we want to say the best way that I know at this point, because sometimes it's hard to pierce through this veil, so to speak, of having been the way it's been all of our lives, and somehow get through that, enter into a new relationship where God takes the veil off of our eyes, turns us into wine from water. But Alpha, that's what Alpha does. I said I don't exactly understand how it happens, but it does. We need to drink the wine of Jesus. Say to Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to come into a closer relationship with you. We have to get out of our own way. Sometimes we trip and fall over ourselves because we've already decided we know all the answers. If we're called to be disciples, it means we need to learn. All of us have much to learn. We need to reach out to others who are far away from God. We can't just say, well... Well, I'm going to heaven. If other people don't go, that's their problem. Jesus says, no, I, that wasn't my attitude. I didn't come you know, to earth just to you know, say a few words here and there, but I hungered for souls. I hunger for the salvation of people, and I want you to do that too. I want you to see you have a responsibility to do that and a privilege. Think if you were able to contact some way, somebody in some, such a way that through your ministry, through your care, through sharing of your faith, they came to faith. They came to salvation. They went to heaven rather than to hell. It would have to make, hopefully, make us feel pretty good. And God would bless us for that because God loves us and he loves all those people that sometimes we don't know how to approach. So we said the little alpha card is a good way just to give it to somebody very nonjudgmentally, just saying you might be interested in this. The Holy Spirit is big. He can take care of it. He can find out um, how to do that. So we don't want anybody to be without Jesus. We're called to make disciples. A disciple means someone who learns. Apostles means those who are sent. So hopefully we'll move from being apostles, move from being disciples to those who are sent out into the world to make disciples, to start the process. And Alpha, first of all, Alpha is free. Get a free dinner. And then the dinner, of course, is, breaks down the, the tension, the resistance, the nervousness. You just talk to people. And we don't even want people to talk about religion. So much as simply come and just talk about stuff. So you begin to feel more relaxed. And then comes the video. You saw parts of that, semblance of that last week, where the message of the gospel is laid out, the kerygma the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. There are other things to be learned, God knows, but we take one step at a time. Uh, To teach the whole Catholic faith takes about 25 years, and so we need to get started. That helps us to start. It's instruction for our hearts, for our minds and our souls. Then we have discussion. Sitting at your table, simply talking about what's on your mind, what questions do you have, what you think about the presentation. 
And through that, somehow something comes alive within us. The Holy Spirit and power comes. In the second reading, it talked about the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit that will be given to us to manifest for the sake of the whole church. And so if we are open to that, then God can do great and wonderful things within us. It's a safe place. We don't have to come with any particular facade about who we are and what we are. We simply come to bringing ourselves. So this is why we're doing Alpha. Not only will Alpha bring someone to an encounter with Christ, uh, but along the road to discipleship, but you who are disciples already will be taught how to be better disciple makers. You'll be taught how to share your faith with others. You'll learn how to be the men and women that God called you to be and be formed into the one who can go and make disciples in your own home, in your own family, in your own workplace. And so Alpha is all about really making disciples. And sometimes, if we're honest, we have to start here. We're much too complacent. We're much too comfortable being where we are. And one of those places where we are is not where God wants it to be, I can assure you. If we look at the Scripture, we'll see Jesus is all about making disciples. It's all he does. Come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome. And so just as like at this wedding feast, we find ourselves in the midst of crisis in the church. Now is a time more than ever to come to build up the church to make it what it is meant to be, servants of Jesus. We'll sort out all the other problems, most of which are pretty much already already sorted out and have been corrected or being corrected But, of course, the press will press the point until the cows come home. Do whatever he tells you. Take some time this week, if you would, to meditate on that. What is Jesus telling you? Try to read some scripture. Listen to what he's saying. And ask ask yourself what God wants you to do about it. Alpha is not something that I do myself or even do with a committee of helpers and and followers. Uh, But it takes all of us to do that because... We have to revive the parish. We have less and less people all the time, it seems, no matter what we do. Something dynamic needs to happen to bring the parish back to life. And so I can only depend on you. I have no place else to turn. And that's what Jesus says. You're all I have. Where else can I go? So I'm relying on you to help in this message. And today in particular, I'm calling on Dan Rusbossen to share his witness and encourage you to try Alpha. Jesus operates through our sharing of the good news, and I ask you now to give him your full attention as he shares his testimony about Alpha. Good morning, everybody. Last night, my wife Tammy asked me if I wanted to watch a movie. It was called Alpha. I was moved as I thought she was trying to help me prepare for today's witness talk. Boy, was I wrong. The movie is about a young man that is separated from his tribe some 20,000 years ago. When he was singled out and on his own, he becomes vulnerable to the world and in his environment around him. Then he comes under attack by a pack of wolves. He escapes by climbing away from those wolves, but mortally wounds the alpha wolf. He does not have the heart to kill it. Instead, he nurtures it to health. The loyalty that was formed between this alpha wolf and the young man was a reminder to me of how loyal God is to us. Even when it may sometimes feel less than ideal, he is loyal and helps to keep us on the right path. Struggles in life can draw us into sin. I apologize to you and to God for any sins that I may have committed against you. Please forgive me, I have a long way to go as a human being to strive to get to where I wanna be someday. So thank you for the opportunity to share with you I'm here to provide information about the Alpha course. However, I must lead with a short personal story, if you don't mind. When my wife Tammy and I first came to Holy Family, it was through the Christ Life series. More specifically, it was through Discovering Christ. 
We were away from the church for a period of time, but we never wavered in our faith. Does that sound familiar to anyone? We were called back to God through fire. We experienced a total loss to our home through a tragic midwinter fire back in 2010. You can say that we hit a low spot, but in those days, in fact, that very same day, we felt that we were not alone. In the ensuing months, and even in the ensuing years, times proved to be trying. Yet, we were provided with a certain inspiration that we were to seek something that we did not comprehend. Perhaps this witness will illustrate that God, I'm sorry, that good things can and will come from tragedy. Through ardent personal invitations, multiple invitations, I might add, by Janice and Michael Walker, we finally agreed to come to that very first night of discovering Christ. We came to Holy Family that night with trepidations, but with hope and an open heart. What we found from that very first minute was warmth, care, and love from all of those that we met. It was very clear that Holy Family Parish had something going on that we can only describe as a fire itself. And I don't mean a physical fire, but a fire in the heart, the fire of the Holy Spirit. It was prevalent in those that attended with us and in those that actually ran the series. It was so obvious. In fact, later, it became clear to us through discernment that we were to become parishioners here. So here we are. Tammy and I believe that the Holy Spirit is alive and well at Holy Family Parish and is working through each and every one of you. We are immensely grateful to know so many of you and we feel very blessed to be part of this community. You helped lift us up when we were down and I thank you for that. In today's world, there are so many challenges and strange things happening all around us. While challenges and struggles have been going on since creation itself, today with modern forms of media like cell phones, iPads and the like, things seem to get out of hand almost instantly. We've become a right now society. So it sure is nice to be here and worship with you like-hearted human beings. Taking time to leave the world behind is refreshing, especially during the Mass. Through today's Mass, it is clear we truly are brothers and sisters in Christ. On a personal level, Alpha has been invaluable to me. An example of that is the very fact that I am here sharing with you today. When I was asked to provide a witness talk about Alpha, my first reaction was yes. That would never, and I assure you, it would never have been the case before. In fact, although I said yes and I meant it, it was just moments later that I felt fear. I felt less than worthy. I felt incompetent. I even felt ashamed for some reason. These are strong emotions, and they are emotions that can make one change their mind, let me tell you. And while I'm not an expert by any means, I imagine that if we ask Father Dan about these feelings, he would likely say that they come from the invisible enemy prowling about this earth. Am I right, Father Dan? The enemy wants us to feel this way, but we can overcome fears like this with strength given to us by the Holy Spirit. Alpha helps us realize that we are in a world that tries to bring us down. Alpha equips us with the tools to win those battles. And man, do we have a great God or what? And we sure need every tool in the shed. Although I do think we all share a common fear. That is, what happens to us after life here on earth. 
be more direct, none of us want to go to hell. If we didn't care or didn't think about things like this, well, we probably wouldn't be here this very moment, right? Another thing we have in common is that we love God. Perhaps we even fear God in a good way. After all, he does have the final say-so as to what happens next. That said, our God is one of love, grace, and mercy. He wants to be close to us, and he wants us to be close to him. And he wants us to have life eternal with him throughout eternity, a life of joy. I also believe that he wants us to experience joy now, even in our hardships and challenges that we face daily. The Alpha experience has helped me to recognize these things and has provided a way to seek God's grace and learn to lean on him. His love is enough to light a fire in me, in you, and in the whole world. All we have to do is ask him. Alpha provides each of us that very opportunity. What we learn and share with each other in our private small groups can be life-changing. The topics covered in the nightly video presentation lead us in discussions. The sense of community is uplifting and brings hope in ways that words cannot describe. In the coming weeks, we have a special opportunity to embrace Jesus in a way that we will find exhilarating. This is an accurate assessment of what we may experience based on what I have experienced. Having taken the Alphan course twice now, I can earnestly share with you that it has been exhilarating for me, and I was actually entertained by the video presentations. And I was moved to want to learn more about how I could have a closer relationship with God. I find that no matter where I am in my faith journey, the sharing amongst the private small groups leads me to hear God's voice in ways that I have not heard him before. It's amazing. Alpha is for everyone. Alpha has no prerequisites. Alpha has no requirements. Alpha is open to you. In fact, we invite you to bring a friend or two. We are called to share God's love with everyone we encounter in life. Why not bring someone along with you? Remember, we, Tammy and I, would not be here today if it weren't for the personal invitation that we received from the walkers. It matters not what age we are, who we are, where we are, what our beliefs may be, or where we are in our faith journey. God can come to us and share things deep inside that we've never felt before. Or perhaps we can share something, something that we have never shared before, and learn something about those feelings. He intervenes in our lives when we least expect it. So let's be open to him. We have the opportunity to experience all of these things, all for the love of God and for the love of Christ within us. We can nurture that and experience his desire to draw closer to us as we turn towards him. In my estimation, that's a win-win. If you look at the ends of the pews, you will find information cards about the upcoming Alpha course. Beginning on Tuesday, February 12th, I encourage you to take one of each of those cards. And there are folks at some of the exits today that you may wish to register with. You may also register online or at the Holy Family Parish website or call or email Ryan Coyne directly. There are three important things you can do for Alpha. One, you can pray for Alpha. Two, you can attend Alpha. And three, you can invite others to, to Alpha. And we hope to see you there. In closing, there's a line that I once heard that goes something like this. After all, 
All we are doing is seeking God. What's so wrong with that? Thank you, Father Dan and Ryan, for bringing Alpha to our parish, and have a great day. God bless.